Hello, welcome to Cam Look, your daily encounter with a work of art from the Cincinnati Art Museum's renowned permanent collection. Check in each weekday at 10 o'clock to enjoy a different work of art. I'm Julie Aronson, curator of American painting, sculpture, and drawings. Today we're going to explore a work that for me is one of the most poignant in the museum's collection, the full-scale plaster model for Frank Duvenek's memorial to his beloved wife, Elizabeth Boot Duvenek. This piece is featured through May 9th in our exhibition, Frank Duvenek, American Master, but is customarily found in our Cincinnati wing. The romance between Frank Duvenek and Elizabeth Boot is the stuff of a movie or a series on PBS's masterpiece. From a line of wealthy erudite Bostonians, Boot grew up in a world apart from Duvenek's humble origins in Kentucky as the son of hardworking entrepreneurial German immigrants. In Florence, Italy, where Boot lived with her widowed father, she was immersed in the arts, surrounded by a pantheon of expatriate writers, artists, and composers. A dear friend of the author Henry James, she pursued the study of painting in Boston and Paris. Her first encounter with Duvenek's darkly realistic work at a Boston exhibition in 1875 led her to purchase his austere portrait of William Adams for her collection. Three years later, during a visit to Venice, she met its artist and engaged him for private lessons. Boot was enthralled not only with Duvenek's flashy command of the paintbrush, but with the burly man himself in whom she recognized a kind and generous spirit. Nevertheless, the poor guy sat on tender hooks for nearly six years as she feared marriage would destroy her exceptionally close bond with her father and her career ambitions. At last, in 1886, Boot acquiesced and the two were married in an intimate ceremony in Paris. The blissfully happy artistic couple had a son the following year, but their joy would be short-lived. Elizabeth caught pneumonia and within just a few days she passed away on their second wedding anniversary. Her devastated husband left Europe after nearly 20 years abroad and returned to the United States. If you'd never made a sculpture before, would you start with something as ambitious as a full-size figure? Well, that's what Duvenek did in 1891 when he undertook a bronze memorial for Elizabeth's grave in Italy. Not surprisingly, he sought technical assistance from sculptor Clement J. Barnhorn. Duvenek looked to tomb sculptures from the Renaissance for the concept of his design in which the recumbent figure appears as though sleeping, the head gently resting on a pillow. I find it almost painful to imagine his feelings as he modeled Elizabeth's features in clay with his fingers and sculpting tools. Her expression is serenely beautiful with just a hint of a warm smile as though she's having a pleasant dream. Duvenek's deft manipulation of clay is replicated in the museum's plaster cast, which at some point was painted to look like bronze. No passage of the draperies is boring, as Duvenek's vibrant touch made certain. The fronds of the palm leaf that traverses the body flow gently, rising and falling. Duvenek went on to make several other sculptures, but none compelling as this one. It's as though the profound depth of his grief were needed to produce a masterpiece. Elizabeth's friends and family found their encounters with this sculpture deeply moving, and it was also a resounding professional success, garnering accolades for the painter lately turned sculptor. When you're able to travel again, I encourage you to visit the picturesque Evangelical Cemetery of the Laurels in Florence to see the bronze memorial at Elizabeth's final resting place. Or at the MFA Boston, there's a version in cool white marble that the artist made for her father. If you lost someone this year, we at the museum offer our sincerest condolences. How do you choose to memorialize those you love?